In this video, we want to talk about what it means in terms of average power or average current or average voltage if we have alternating current sources or alternating voltage sources. And to get us started, let's um, consider this kind of a situation. Suppose there's a truck driver and he is driving along at 70 miles an hour for the first four hours of his trip. Then he spends two hours unloading the truck and then once he recommences driving again for the last three hours of his trip from six o'clock to nine o'clock he drives at 50 miles an hour. And we want to know what would be the average speed of the over the duration of the nine hours for the total length of the trip. So if we look at our first rectangle, we see that its base is four, four hours, and its height is 70, seven times 10, 70 miles an hour. So if we take the area of it, four times 70, that's 280 miles. So the area of this rectangle represents the total distance traveled over that four hour time period. It's the base, four hours, times the height, 70 miles an hour, to give us 280 miles. Then of course this would be zero. Then for our second rectangle, it has a base of three, three hours, times the height of 50 miles an hour. So if we get its area multiplying the base by the height, we have three hours times 50 miles an hour. That's 150 miles. So this rectangle, its area represents the total miles traveled from six o'clock to nine o'clock. Now if we ask, what is the um, average speed of his trip? Of course, we would want to know the total miles traveled over that nine hour period. Or to say that differently, we would want to know the area of this rectangle plus this area plus the area of that rectangle considered over the total length of our figures here. Figures being the rectangle, this line, and this rectangle, which of course is nine. Or obviously the average speed would just be then 280 plus zero from here plus 150 divided by nine, or it's 47 and seven tenths miles an hour. Notice that that is less than his slowest speed of 50 miles an hour. So that's, of course, we had two miles or two hours here where he wasn't driving. But that, obviously, is a simple example um, of how to find the, uh, the average rate of speed in this problem. But now let's consider, if we don't have rectangles to consider to deal with, but instead we say we have a sine wave or a cosine wave to deal with. So here's a typical sine wave. We're talking about the sine of omega t. Omega is the angular velocity in terms of uh, radians per second. We had talked about that back in video number 69. Of course, its amplitude is 1. But now, if we had three times the sine of omega t, then the amplitude of this would be 3. And down here minus three. Now if we have an alternating current source, then the way it's usually designated is like this, a maximum value times the sine of omega t. So this acts as here as time, and if this now was current, this acts as here, then this would be I m and down here, this would be I m going in the opposite direction. What would be the average current for this? And we'd approach that the same way as we approached our uh, trucker's problem. We'd say, well, it would be the area of this loop 
plus the area of that loop divided by the total length here. But the area of this loop plus the area of that loop adds up to zero. Just as if we had, say something like this, two rectangles. This has a height of A and a base of B. This one has a base of B, but a height of minus A. So of course, this area here is going to be AB, but this area is going to be minus AB. So if we add it up, it comes out to zero, and the same thing happens here. So the average current is zero. Now, if instead we had I m times the cosine of omega t, then it would look something like this. Here we have a cosine wave times I m, the maximum value that we have. But again, this area plus this area gets negated by this area, so the average current is zero. But now, when we're talking about power, then of course it's not just the current, but it is the current squared that we're interested in. So we can say that the alternating power for, or from the alternating current source is equal to that current, that alternating current squared times the resistance. So if our, say our supply current was a sine wave like this, so I am, let's write it like this, our alternating current IAC is I am times the sine of omega t. If we square this, then we're squaring this, and that's going to look roughly something like this. Of course, this is time. This is current. Same thing here. But here, this is now I squared M times the sine squared of omega T. So where this was negative, this loop, well, of course, negative squareds are positives, so and that becomes a positive loop now. And here was I M. Here it's I M squared. So if this was three times the sine of omega t. This is now going to be nine times the sine squared of omega t. So that would be IAC squared. But what is the average value of that? Or if instead of, if IAC was with a cosine function instead of a sine function, then and if this was 3, then we square it. This would be 9. This would be 9. And this negative loop would be a positive loop. So again, the average current obviously is not 0. And if this was a cosine wave squared, obviously the average current would not be 0. But how do we find that average current? That's what we need to do. So what we want to do is, if we want to find an average power, then we have to consider the average value of this. Or in this case, what would be this average current? So how can we do that? So let's just first say that IAC, our current source, it could be a cosine wave or it could be a sine wave. either one, it's going to work out to be the same either way. Now we have this squared. So this is squared, this is squared, this is squared, this is squared. 
Now there's a trigonomic relationship between cosine squared and the cosine of 2 omega t and also with the sine squared and the cosine of 2 omega t. This goes like this. The cosine squared of omega t equals one half times one plus the cosine of two times omega t. And the sine squared of omega t it's very similar. It is one half times one minus the cosine of two times omega t. So we want to find the average value of this. But let's write this out a little bit differently using our trigonometric relationships here. So we could say that IAC squared equals, each one has a one-half and a one and an IM squared. So we could say that this is equal to one-half I am squared times one plus or minus the cosine of two omega t. It would be we we'll use the plus if our we're, we're working with a cosine wave in our um, uh, direct current source, or we use the minus if it was a sine wave. Now we want to determine though what is the average value of this. That means we have to find the average value of this. Well, the average value of 2 omega t, that's still zero. We know that for a sine wave or a cosine wave its average is zero. We just went over that. Well, here we have, for example, here's the sine of omega t. Now here would be the sine of two times omega t. All that means is that where there is one cycle, now there's two cycles, but the areas cancel out just like they did before. The area of this loop gets canceled by the area of this loop. The area of this loop gets canceled out by the area of this loop. And for the cosine of 2 times omega t, it'd be the same thing. We noted that for the cosine of omega t, these areas get canceled. So if we had the cosine of 2 times omega t, that means that in here we just have two cycles instead of one cycle. But again, they would cancel each other out, just as you saw saw it happening here for the sine of 2 omega t. So that means then that when we're discussing average values, that's zero. And the average value of one, well, of course, that's just one. If one is just a number, that would be like asking what's the average value of five, of course, it's just five. And this, this I m, that's the maximum value of our current. And again, that's just a number doesn't have any average, average, it's just strictly a number. So, and this average is zero. So the average of our current squared turns out to be just one half of the maximum current squared. So we go back to here. For example, if this was 3 times the sine of omega t. Now when we square it, this is going to be 9. So the maximum value here is 9. So that means its average value, that average current, would be 4 and a half. And of course, this is for the current squared. But that average value of the current squared then is four and a half. It's real simple to find. It's just the maximum value divided by two.
And of course, it'd be the same thing if this was voltage instead of current. Uh, obviously, it'd still work out the same. Well, now, let's talk about then about the average power. So, we're saying that the power from an alternating current source is that source squared times the resistance or the average power would be the average value of this and we just determined that it is one half the maximum value of that alternating current squared times R. So that would be the average power being delivered to our uh, circuit. Well, suppose that instead of having an alternating current source for our circuit, we want to hook it up to a direct current source and still have the same amount of power delivered. How would we do that? So we have here power. That would equal the direct current squared times the resistance. And we want these two to be the same. So we have I squared DCR equals one half IM squared R. These cancel. Of course, this is the maximum value of our alternating current. Now take the square root of both sides. We have I DC equals the square root of that is just IM divided by the square root of two. Or that's very close to being seven tenths times IM. So if we have an alternating current source that we're using to deliver power to a circuit, and instead of using that alternating current source, we want to use a direct current source, how much current should we have for it? And that would just simply be seven tenths the maximum value of our alternating current source, and that will deliver the same amount of power. And sometimes this is called the root mean square value. Um, so you, or sometimes you just see it abbreviated as RMS. But anyway, that's where it comes from. Um, I think that's it then for this video. This, I believe, is video number 75 in our um, electrical circuit analysis. Um, the, the playlist is at the website digital-university.org.